Right, time to take a look at what's grabbing headlines around the world. Uh, and uh, Flo is back in the studio with me. Hi. Uh, now, uh, still lots of focus on, on the aftermath of uh, Tuesday's terror attacks in Belgium. Uh, the Interior and Justice Ministers uh, coming under fire in the press today. That's right. Le Soir talks about major errors uh, on the front page today. And you can see a photo of both the uh, Interior Minister uh, Jean Jambon and the uh, the Justice Minister uh, Cohen Greens, you can see him. He's on the he's on the on the right there, and Jean Jambon is on the left. Uh, both actually offered to uh, resign, actually over growing criticism that Belgium had failed to act on warnings that there could be an imminent terrorist attack. But uh, this in the story is really the main story in the Belgian press today. If we look at another article in La Libre Belgique, uh, it points out that the prime minister, uh, Charles Michel, has refused their offer to resign. Uh, and he is very adamant on defending Belgium's democracy right now. He says democracy won't be broken. OK, well, many papers uh, wonder if Belgium is gearing up for a major political crisis. That's right. In fact, if we go back to La Libre Belgique, that, that's exactly what they want to know. Uh, are we going towards a major political crisis? And you can see a photo of, of both men once again. La Libre Belgique says the political truce that we saw in the wake of the terrorist attacks didn't last very long, just three days, in fact. And now the gloves are off between uh, the majority and the opposition. Now, the former mayor of Molenbeek, the, the, the area uh, in, uh, in, in Brussels where a lot of uh, the suspects are from, he's also coming under fire in the Belgian press. Uh, now, Philippe Moreau is his name. He was mayor of Molenbeek for 20 years. Uh, and last week, this is actually before the terrorist attack, the prime minister, shall me Michel lashed out against him uh, and saying uh, he was actually partially responsible for the fact that Molenbeek has become somewhat of a hotbed for terrorism. You can read more about it here in Le Soir. When you're mayor, uh, it's your responsibility to know what's happening to your community. Now, what's mm -hmm. interesting is Philippe Moreau actually appeared on French TV yesterday, uh, and this is also getting a lot of attention here uh, in Le Soir. Uh, now, he was, according to Le Soir, tense during this TV interview, uh, but he did defend his track record, though you can see this quote here. Uh, he, he did admit, uh, perhaps I was a little too prudent on the issue of social diversity. OK, let's move on uh, to another big story in the press today. Uh, lots of focus on uh, Radovan Karadzic. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the former Bosnian Serb leader uh, was found guilty of genocide. That's right. Mm -hmm. Huge story uh, in the oh, press today. Uh, let's start with a, a Serbian pa paper, actually. Uh, it's uh, called Blitch. It's a, it's a center-left tabloid. They're being very factual here. Uh, Karadzic will be behind bars until he's 90, probably longer, though, because, mm. of course, he was sentenced to 40 years. He's he's uh, in his early 70s. Uh, now, what's interesting is the the the, the, the news was met with rage uh, by certain ultra-nationalists in Serbia. Most papers, though, are, uh, are uh, reacting uh, by applauding uh, this verdict. Let's take a look at some front pages in Britain. You have The Independent, uh, w which talks about the genocidal butcher of Srebrenica. Uh, he's sentenced to 40 years. You get this feeling that finally that he's been sentenced. The Guardian as well, uh, you can see on their front page, they're talking about guilty of genocide. Justice uh, has caught up with Karadzic. But what's interesting is The Guardian reports about another group that's angry about the verdict, but for very different reasons. And these are uh, survivors of the Srebrenica ma massacre and their family members. They actually wanted the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia to go further. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe that 40 years is not enough. Uh, and you can see this quote here from one of what they call the Srebrenica mothers. Uh, is the tribunal not ashamed? It's not enough. They feel like he escaped, essentially, a life sentence. Wow. OK, well, we're staying with uh, The Guardian. Uh, it says the verdict is a huge uh, achievement for the, uh, the International uh, Criminal Tribunal. That's right, and international justice in, in general, which is actually quite a young uh, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And this is a very interesting editorial that points out that this is just the end of the beginning for international justice. Uh, it points out that by ending impunity and uh, essentially uh, international justice will not only uh, bring justice to survivors, it will perhaps even stop further crimes for ha from happening. Uh, and this article points out that if you look at the bleak landscape of the 21st century from Sudan to Syria, it's clear that there is still a lot of work to do in terms of international justice. OK, well, on a, light, a lighter note, <laughs> moving on to New Zealand, uh, where a referendum has been held over whether or not 
to change the national flag. That's right, and a majority of New Zealanders do not want to change their flag. You can read about it in The Guardian again. <laughs> uh, you can see, as you were, New Zealand votes to keep its flag, and, and there's the flag that they're going to keep. 56% uh, of voters say they, they want to keep their flag with the Union Jack here over the alternative design, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Yeah. Uh, it's a design with a, a silver fern on it, uh, which, uh, well, I guess a lot of people just didn't like so much. We can take a look at it. Uh, you can see the uh, the alternative version. Uh, the Prime Minister, there it is, the Prime Minister mm. of New Zealand, John Key, he says he's disappointed that New Zealanders didn't want this new flag. Uh, but he's actually coming under a lot of fire because mm. organizing this referendum cost a lot of money. Uh, 26 million New Zealand dollars. That's about 15.6 uh, million euros. Just to change a flag. <laughs> Just to change and a flag. That isn't going to be changed in the end. That's right. Well, I think quite, they quite did... a fiasco. <laughs> but you can well, see its critics say he wanted to divide the country over this ugly flag. Yeah, well, yeah, I feel like, guys, if you're going to if you're going to change the flag, if you're going to do it, do it right. That's right. Maybe right? a unicorn on it or something <laughs> cool. You know? Or an all-black uh, rugby player. Yeah, maybe I don't that know. would have been better. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Okay, well, uh, finally, a quick uh, quick word on the Rolling Stones. Uh, That's right. They're just about to kick off their concert in the Havana. Oh, I had Havana, rather. La Havana. Um, and you can see this is Grand Mod, the official Cuban newspaper, which is very excited. Uh, they're finally here. That's pretty much how you can, you can uh, translate their headline today. Uh, this is really a historic concert. Papers all over the world are, are, are reporting about this. Libby uh, as well. Uh, it talks about uh, how they're going to rock the house. Cuba on the rock. Uh, it's kind of a, a funny play on words in French. Uh, and it's certainly a satisfaction haha, -ha, for the band because once upon a time, English music was actually <laughs> banned in, uh, in Cuba. So it's, uh, it's going to be quite a show. And in fact, I think Cubans are very excited. Yeah, well, the fans will surely be in for a treat tonight. Uh, Florence uh, Villeminot with the press review there. Thanks very much, Flo.